can be domestic. Have a good day. Stop! Where do you think you're going? For work. You are not going to work. Then I shall go to work. Mom, it is less than 24 hours ago that Dr. Kleiman told you to stop what you were doing and get some rest. No, he told me to get plenty of rest, and I have rested plenty. But look what I made for you. Decaf coffee and wheat germ, prune juice and... Prune juice? What exactly do you think is wrong with me? He said no smoking, no drinking, no caffeine, and no stress. Your job is stress. Amy, I can think of nothing more stressful than sitting around in an empty house all day trying to relax. What is that? It's prune juice for Grandma. It's healthy. It looks like... I know, I know what it looks like, but it makes you healthy. Grandma, I thought you were supposed to be in bed. She is. No, I am supposed to be resting. I can rest any place. Mom, there's a reason they call it work. If it was restful, they'd call it rest. I'll tell you what. There. Now I'm healthy. <laughs> Thanks so much. Everyone, have a good day. Judge Gray, Alvin Twykoff. I'm representing Bruce Van Axel in his assault case. Do you have a moment? Of, of course. How is Bruce? In need of employment. Well, we both agreed that given the circumstances, he ought to be suspended. That was before he hired me. And what's the game plan? I need you to write a letter to the presiding judge requesting that Bruce be reinstated pending the outcome of the case. Yeah, I, I'd be happy to do that. And your, your thinking is... Of course, I'm not at liberty to discuss that. <laughs> Of course you're not. It would be helpful to my client at the sentencing if he were still employed. The trial, you mean? Yes, for the trial. Because you said sentencing. I guess I misspoke. Trial lawyers don't misspeak, which makes me wonder if you meant sentencing hearing, which means Bruce is going to do something idiotic, like change his plea to guilty? I've said too much already. No, no, you said just enough. Will you write the letter? You'll have it by the end of the day. Thank you. What, uh, what is the difficulty? I would prefer to get it done today. Yes. Maxine? Uh, well, then I will check with you in a few days. Yes, thank you. Goodbye. What is it, Sean? I'm up to my neck. What are you doing? I am checking on Jason Savko, the boy that we placed with the Dordell family. Yeah, the short kid. Yes, I'm, I'm trying to get some kind of confirmation that he has signed up for the special needs programs he may require. Special needs? He's just short. Besides, program placement is usually handled by schools, not caseworkers. Well, this caseworker wants to be sure that nothing falls through the cracks. Maxine, you are not even supposed to be here. I've already put through the paperwork on your six-week medical leave, per your doctor's orders. When my daughter called you, did you tell her that nobody likes a snitch? Look, I have never pulled rank on you. Mostly because you just ignore me and I'd back down. But this time, that is just what I'm doing. Pulling rank and not backing down. Either you go home right now or I will fire you. <laughs> I will.
Bruce. Uh, temporarily, of course. Of course. It's not going to be like last time. Let's hope. In the matter of uh, baby Jane Doe, the Her state... Her name is Tess. Like Tess of the D'Urbervilles. Uh, Ms. Ms. Warren. Uh, the state is petitioning for an OTC? DCF is requesting an order of temporary custody on the grounds of failure to protect, child endangerment. I take very good care of my baby. The infant was found by a high school janitor in the library storage room. Cheryl works as a student library assistant and has been keeping the baby hidden in the storage room for the past month and a half. It took a month and a half before somebody discovered a baby in a storage room? Your Honor, the storage room isn't used by anyone other than the student aide. My client kept Tess there during the day while she was in classes and carried her home in her knapsack at night. She was afraid to tell her mother she'd had a baby. And the mother slept through the wake-up cries for the 3 a.m. feedings? Um, Mrs. Warren works in the assembly line swing shift at Pratt & Whitney, leaving her daughter Cheryl home alone at night. Cheryl Warren is clearly unfit and ill-prepared to provide for the infant. That's just not true. Despite the unusual circumstances under which Tess lived, she's in excellent physical health due to my client's exemplary care. Well, don't push it, Mr. Simmons. Keeping a baby in a storage room is not exactly an example I'd urge others to follow. In any case, Your Honor, now that Mrs. Warren is aware of the birth of her grandchild, she is anxious to assume custody and provide a warm and loving home. A home so warm and loving that her daughter was afraid to tell her she was pregnant? Ms. Feinberg, give me a slightly less cynical version of DCF stand. DCF recommends placement in a temporary foster facility until a suitable long-term home can be found. Okay, um, I'll allow an emergency order of temporary custody pending an evidential hearing on this matter, and uh, I will hear arguments for permanent custody from both sides on... Uh, fr Friday. Friday. No, uh, Wednesday. No, uh, tomorrow at 10. Two. Tomorrow, two. Are you sure? Absolutely. Pretty sure. Um, excuse me, Kyle? Trung now. Giselle, Randy, eat your melon again? Um, no. Jenna insulted your hat? What's wrong with my hat? Nothing. Love the hat. What is it? Um, there's this new girl. She won't interact. She copped a toot about the sign and cheat. Not everybody's as enthusiastic as you, Giselle. Just give her some time. How long has she been coming around? I don't know. I tried to greet her yesterday, but she blew me off. That's her. Her? Yeah. You want to hear where she told me to put the welcome sheet? What's wrong? Do you know her? She isn't supposed to be here. Giselle, please, I can handle this. I believe you have something of mine. What? My backpack, remember? Maybe you're here to return it so I won't have to press charges. She's burning up. Maybe she OD'd. You know, drugs aren't allowed in here. It's not an overdose. Call 911. Are you officially giving me permission to use the phone? Call 911! The house is the first step toward a healthy body. Lauren! Don't make me call you again! We're gonna be late! I'm not certain, but I think I just heard your blood pressure spike. Well, it's not my blood pressure we're worried about. Well, we don't have to worry about that because I am on a forced sabbatical, which means I intend to spend the day in bed. Resting. Yes. Until 3 p.m. What happens at 3 p.m.? I signed you up for an activity. What activity? The wise women walkers. Oh, for the love of God. No, it's, it's better than it sounds. You're, you're going to love it. I already don't love it. Well, it's a way to get exercise without being bored. <laughs> well, can't they walk without naming themselves? I don't know. Maybe they wanted T-shirts. <laughs> if you think that I am Which going to... Which you don't have to wear. Why don't you join the wise women walkers? Because I'm not the one that collapsed. Just try it, okay? 
I would rather snort prune juice up my nose. You can do both. Are you and Grandma fighting? No. Yes. She hated the wise women walkers, right? Let's get in the car. Just, just try it. You're gonna love it! Bruce, you're, you're back. Yes, I am. Uh, may I sit? I prefer to be alone. Uh, okay. I just want to say, I, I'm, I'm so sorry for everything you're going through. Thank you. N not that I know everything you're going through. You know, not, not that I need to. J you know, just keep this in mind. We're still us. I, I mean, of course we are. <laughs> But when a person does something out of character, it could precipitate a dark night of the soul. Not that I'm using the word dark pejoratively, or, or, or the word soul lightly, or, or lightly to make light of darkly. Dumb. Look, if you had brought a, a, a Boston Terrier over from France 200 years ago, it would still be a Boston Terrier. Donald, what are you talking about? People don't become someone they're not. Like Boston Terriers from France. Boston Terrier is an American breed. They'd never be in France. And what does any of this have to do with me? I'm thinking maybe we should just drop it. Please. I need to go now. Good. Mm -hmm. That harbor place, it's changed. New sheriff in town. <laughs> no more rule bending. Did you bring me here? You're very sick. Do I have AIDS? No. Am I gonna be okay? We need to contact your parents. They were divorced. I don't know where my dad lives. What's wrong with me? Then let's call your mom. She should be here with you. Why? You lied. I do have AIDS. No. You don't have AIDS, but you're very sick. Fungal endocarditis. What does that mean? <laughs> it means that it, you're very sick. Look, I know that the last thing in the world you want is to talk to your mom, but no. No matter how bad you think it is, no matter how horrible that last conversation was, she's gonna wanna know that you're here. <sighs> I read one of your books the library books you had in your pack. I read the Gatsby one. He did. I really like that guy. Gatsby. I like to be him, you know, just start over. You may want to consider how he ends up. 
I really like that last line about boats against the current. And that's so true, you know? Everything is so, like, pointless. The point is that you can't disown your past and reinvent yourself. Not without paying a price. You need to call your mom. It's your interpretation. It's not mine. Mr. Bryant, how long have you been the janitor at Miles K's Under High? 22 years. I've known Cheryl the last three. She's friendly and smart, too, always on the honor roll. Mr. Mr. Maitland, is your witness testifying for DCF or from his warren? Uh, your honor, we'll take all good character references. Mr. Bryant, just answer the questions asked. Yes, ma'am. How did you discover the child in the storage room? Well, it was about seven at night, and I had finished emptying the trash in the library when I heard Tess crying. So I used my passkey to go into the storage room, and there she was. I figured the baby was hungry because Cheryl usually didn't leave her that late, so... Excuse me. Did you say she usually didn't leave her that late? Yes, ma'am. You knew she was keeping a baby in the storage room? I've known for a couple of weeks. And you didn't say anything? Well, all the books piled up in there make it kind of dusty, but other than that, it's not a bad little room. Cheryl hung pictures of teddy bears on the wall, and it looked nice. And she put a blanket in a cardboard box to make a bed and left a flashlight on for a light. Well, all that is well and good, but it doesn't explain why you didn't report her earlier. Ma'am, if you had seen Tess with Cheryl, she always kept that baby clean. I mean, she must have changed diapers between every class. Tess has only got a diaper rash once. It was when my math teacher made me stay after, and I had to leave her sitting in wet diapers. Mr. Simmons, would you please explain to your client this is not the right time for her to speak? Apologies, Your Honor. This baby book said all I had to do was put cornstarch on her bottom. I did it, and she was better in no time. Mr. Simmons. Cornstarch, huh? Miss Kozlowski. I is there some confusion today with who is testifying when and for whom? Continue, Mr. Bryant. I saw Cheryl feeding Tess a bottle under the bleachers one morning before school, and she was rocking her and singing to her, and it seemed like one happy baby. Living in a storage room. Miss Feinberg, please. This is precisely why DCF I is... am still seeing the forest despite the trees. Continue, Mr. Bryant. My mom ran off when I was a kid and I was bounced from one foster home to the next. Things that happened to me there, I would never mention in mixed company. No more questions, Your Honor. Mr. Simmons? Uh, no, we're satisfied, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. My system was too acidic. The minute I changed my diet, it was like magic. No more leg cramps, no more fibromyalgia, no more headaches. Well, see, didn't I tell you? Yeah, I had the opposite problem. I was way too alkaline. My colon hydrotherapist took me off of all sprouts and legumes. Uh, were you uh, eating a lot of sprouts and legumes? Oh, and azuki beans. I thought I was being healthy. And the irony is, I might as well have been smoking and eating dairy. You don't say. You all need to go to my wellness counselor and let her do a custom biobalance profile instead of guessing and ending up surprised. Wait, no, I know. Is anybody reading anything good? Oh, I'm reading the best book. We can all pass it around after I'm finished, but Maxine gets it first because she's the newbie. What is it? The Okinawa program. Okinawa, Japan? Uh-huh. How the longest live people achieve everlasting health and how you can too. Oh! 
Well, I get it after Maxine. I get it after Flo. Well, it's not as if there's a rush. Once we read it, we're all going to live forever. Maxine has a point. I wasn't inhaling. You know what? Fine, just fine. Go ahead and kill yourself. I get the jewelry. It could be worse. I could be eating... Eating azuki beans. Salty? Uh, my name is Ogilvy. Salty was my married name. Who are you? Kyle McCarty. I work for Teen Harbor in Hartford. It's a center for runaway teens. Anna Salty is your daughter, right? No. No? Look, whatever she's done, it is not my fault. She is no longer a member of this family. Uh, she's not in trouble. Well, uh, not, not in the way you think. Ms. Ogilvy, she's in ICU at Hartford General. I am not responsible for those bills. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here for the medical bills. Your, your daughter has a bloodborne staph infection which has attacked her heart valve. She is very sick. I'm sure you want to go to the hospital. Look, I know things haven't been good between you two, but you, you can't hold a grudge against her now. She is not my daughter anymore. Damn it! Bruce! Oh, I I'm sorry about yesterday. I, I really was trying to say something. Well, whatever it was, Donald. I'll be quick just... and coherent. Go ahead. I was only trying to say that I don't want to feel uncomfortable around you because of what happened, but I was too uncomfortable to get it to come out right. I'm your friend, and I know who you are. And I don't know why this happened, but, but I'm not going to walk on eggshells around you or feel weird around you, because if I did that, then I'd lose you as a friend, and I'm not going to do that. Thank you. And as a tangible representation of all that, I bought you this. Here. <laughs> it's Russian nesting Boston Terriers. <laughs> um, I... Uh, I don't know what to say. Don't worry about it. She's dead. You 
came. I'm sure that made her very happy. They said I missed her by an hour. It doesn't matter. I've been telling myself for months that she was dead. But you're still here. Yes, well, I'm leaving now. She said she loved you. Despite everything. Don't lie to me. In the past three years, Cheryl, how many times would you say you've missed school? Twice. Once when my grandma died, and again when I whacked my head during PE and needed stitches. Objection. We're talking about since the baby was born. Uh, keep it current, Mr. Simmons. And in the six weeks since Tess was born? I faked sick three times so I could take her down to the free clinic downtown. Was she sick? Oh, no. Well, baby visits. Newborns need shots and monthly doctor exams. Doctors are mandated reporters, Your Honor. Yes, Miss Feinberg. If you hadn't interrupted, I probably would have brought that up. Mr. Simmons? Uh, Dr. Chin, the free clinic pediatrician, was unaware of Tessa's living conditions. And since there was nothing deleterious in Tessa's health to indicate she'd received abusive or neglectful treatment, there was no reason for him to report her. In fact, it was just the contrary. Dr. Chin had nothing but praise for the exemplary care my client gives her daughter. This is Dr. Chin's report. How did you, uh, know to take her for well baby visits? I read all these childcare books so I'd know what to do. Is that how you knew what to do when you gave birth? Um, yeah, it helped. But it still hurt. A lot. Who is the baby's father? Do I have to say? Yeah, you do. Well, he said he doesn't want to be involved. Well, he's going to have to say that to the court. Can you give me his name? What if I just bring him here? Uh, I guess that could work. What time are they going to be here, Mr. Van Exel? Tomorrow at 4.30. Tomorrow at 4.30. Thank you, Ms. Warren. Are you aware that your library book is four months overdue? That girl stole it. The one who died? I am sorry. How do you do it? How do you keep banging your head against that wall every single day without your skull caving in? Well, I certainly have my share of headaches, but the wall has a few lumps as well. I work my ass off to get to these kids, to reach out, bring them in, let them know that it's going to be okay. And what happens? They run. They take, and they take, and then they're gone. Back out on the streets or dead. I guess what? I'm done. I'm through with the chasing. I will work at Teen Harbor, but if they, if they want help, they will come in, they will fill out the forms, and they will ask. But I'm through going after them. It's not worth it. No wonder I'm smoking so much. Well, I'm sure you know best. However, at this moment, you do not know best because if you did, you would shut up and you would quit using feeling sorry for yourself as an excuse to smoke and you would know that if you want absolute victories, then you should go back into medicine. We do what we can. We patch them up, we send them out there, we hope for the best and we very seldom get it. But we keep on going because what the hell else are we gonna do?
Giselle, what an utter surprise to see you here this morning. I'm here every morning. I'm the one in charge of turning on the lights. I was being facetious. Huh? Giselle, is there something I can do for you? Um, there's this girl at the front. She says she's not sure if she wants to come in. I think she's scared of signing in and all. If she doesn't want to ask for help, that's her prerogative. Oh, hi, there you are. Do you need something? No. I I'm in the wrong place. Wait. My name's Kyle. Can I help you? Okay, Ms. Warren, we are here to meet Tessa's father. Is he running late? He didn't want to come. He sent this note. Cheryl, tell me more about Tessa's birth. Like what? I told you it hurt. How long were you in labor? Four, no, six hours. I think, I'm not sure. And were you alone when you delivered or did anyone help you? One of your friends? I was alone. I never told any of my friends. Where was Tess born? The bathroom at the mall. How many stalls were there? Five, I think. So in four or six hours, no one else came into the bathroom? I was quiet. The janitor testified that he saw you feeding the baby with a bottle under the bleachers. I usually fed her in the storage room, but I had left her bottle in my locker. Why didn't you breastfeed? I didn't know how. You figured out childbirth from a book, but you couldn't figure out breastfeeding? Your Honor, I don't see the relevance of these questions. I... Cheryl, whose baby is this? She's mine. No, she's not. She's not your baby, and there's no mystery father who wrote this note. You know that, and I know that. And if you don't start telling the truth, I'm going to initiate a contempt proceeding and perjury investigation against you. Ask your lawyer why you don't want that to happen. I've found Tess in the dumpster. On my way home from school, I heard this noise. And I looked in, and there was something moving around in a plastic bag. I, th I thought it was a cat or a puppy or something. I, I opened the bag, and, and she was in a towel, all bloody, with slime all over her. And I. I wiped her off, and she was so small, so perfect. And when I held her for the first time, it made everything in my life make sense. Like all the things I've done, gone to school, got good grades, stayed out of trouble. And they're all leading to this moment, so, so I could be Tessa's mother. You know, whoever threw Tess away like a piece of trash is not her mother. Tess is my baby. I found her, I named her, took care of her. And that makes me her mother, no matter what you or anyone else decide. Thank you, Miss Warren. Well, in the eyes of the law, you are a child. And uh, despite your, your best efforts at mothering, 
If you don't understand why it was wrong to keep a baby in a storage room, then you are not yet mature enough to be a parent. <laughs> uh, I, I will be denying Mrs. Warren's custody request. The OTC will stay in effect and DCF will notify the authorities immediately. And Ms. Warren, despite my ruling, I am sure that someday, when you are ready, you will make a wonderful mother. I know my lease says I have to give you 60 day notice, but under the circumstances, I thought. Yeah, look, I have to go. What do you say I stop by and sign the paperwork on my way home? All right, good, bye. What circumstances? You are changing your plea. I don't want to talk about this with you. This is some messed up way of switching Catholic guilt, isn't it? I was such a good Catholic, I never would have been in this situation in the first place. Then give me one good reason why you're throwing your life away. You said I should be punished for what I did. Yeah, but the punishment should fit the crime. I don't think totally destroying your life is a fair punishment for, for being a hothead with a mean left hook. Well, that's not the point. Do you know what you could get for aggravated assault? Whatever the court decides... Oh, court... bring out the hair shirt, Bruce. You said I scared you. What... What you did, um, yeah, I, I didn't know the person that was capable of doing that. At least I didn't think I did. And, um, and it frightened me. That makes two of us. If you go to jail, what's going to happen to Rebecca? She, she has my mother, my sister. she should be okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure the visitor's loud. And she, county jail is very festive on Father's Day. What am I supposed to do? Have your lawyer try to cut a deal with the district attorney. They'll postpone the case. You'll get community service, anger management. You'll come back before the judge in three months. They'll dismiss the charge, and this whole mess will go away. And what am I teaching Rebecca if I do that? That it's OK to beat the crap out of someone and duck responsibility? You are showing her that you are human, and that sometimes humans are messy and emotional. And if provoked, yes, even you can lose your cool. I'll see you in court, Judge Gray. What are you doing? Something that should have been done months ago. It's two o'clock in the morning. Yes, why aren't you sleeping? How can I sleep when you're having the loudest nervous breakdown in history? Mom, Mom, you collapsed. Even your doctor said you had to cut down on your stress, otherwise you'd have another attack. Nothing attacked me. I fell down. Oh, stop with the semantics. You're blood pressure's off the charts, you have bronchitis bordering on emphysema, you've weakened your liver from your drinking. And my you... cholesterol's 59 points too high. Thank you for that thrilling recount of my visit to the hospital, Amy. Go back to bed. What, what sane person does this at 2 a.m.? Amy, I'm an adult in my own house. If I want to clean cupboards at 2 in the morning, I'll clean cupboards at 2 in the morning. Well, I'm an adult in the household, too. And, and there's the problem. There should not be two adults playing tug of war for head of the household. Not to mention the other obvious pitfalls. What other obvious pitfalls? We should never have discussed that case. Buckley Hills. You're blaming that on me? We shouldn't have been talking about a case. And we wouldn't have been if we lived in separate households. 
It's just, it's too easy for us to uh, unload on each other about the day. Just as it's convenient for you to leave your daughter with me while you run off with love affair of the week. Meanwhile, I had to give up my love affair so I could be here for you. Oh, don't lay that on me. You stayed for work. I uh, didn't want to leave my work, but I stayed here for you. But you, you I, said... I know what I said. I also know why I stayed. Well, I didn't ask you to do that. Oh, Amy. Oh, Amy, what? You didn't ask in so many words. I didn't ask at all. Do you want to know what your trouble is? It's always the same thing. It's why you got married, when you knew it was a mistake. And it's why you slept with Lauren's karate teacher, <laughs> or, and God knows who else. You are afraid to be alone. Oh, please. You are. You got married five minutes after you graduated from law school. And, and when you divorced Michael, you moved in here five minutes after that. And all of this hovering and scolding and policing and signing me up to walk with the new age hypochondriacs from hell is just one more version of, of you being afraid to be alone. You're stuck to me like pine sap because you're scared your mommy's gonna die. You're so worried about my stress level when the truth is that half of the stress in my life comes from you. Coming up next on TNT's Prime Time in the Daytime, Vincent returns to Hartford only to find new drama. Don't miss Judging Amy, next on TNT. Domestic. Have a good day. Stop! Where do you think you're going? For work. You are not going to work. Then I shall go to work. Mom, it is less than 24 hours ago that Dr. Kleiman told you to stop what you were doing and get some rest. No, he told me to get plenty of rest, and I have rested plenty. But look what I made for you. Decaf coffee and wheat germ, prune juice and... Prune juice? What exactly do you think is wrong with me? He said no smoking, no drinking, no caffeine and no stress. Your job is stress. Amy, I can think of nothing more stressful than sitting around in an empty house all day trying to relax. What is that? It's prune juice for Grandma. It's healthy. It looks like... I know, I know what it looks like, but it makes you healthy. Grandma, I thought you were supposed to be in bed. She is. No, I am supposed to be resting. I can rest any place. Mom, there's a reason they call it work. If it was restful, they'd call it rest. I'll tell you what. There. Now I'm healthy. <laughs> Thanks so much. Everyone, have a good day.
Judge Gray? Alvin Twykoff. I'm representing Bruce Van Axel in his assault case. Do you have a moment? Of, of course. How is Bruce? In need of employment. Well, we both agreed that given the circumstances, he ought to be suspended. That was before he hired me. And what's the game plan? I need you to write a letter to the presiding judge requesting that Bruce be reinstated pending the outcome of the case. Yeah, I, I'd be happy to do that. And your, your thinking is... Of course, I'm not at liberty to discuss that. <laughs> of course you're not. It would be helpful to my client at the sentencing if he were still employed. The trial, you mean? Yes, for the trial. Because you said sentencing. I guess I misspoke. Trial lawyers don't misspeak, which makes me wonder if you meant sentencing hearing, which means Bruce is going to do something idiotic, like change his plea to guilty? I've said too much already. No, no, you've said just enough. Will you write the letter? You'll have it by the end of the day. Thank you. Uh, what is the difficulty? I would prefer to get it done today. Yes. Maxine? Uh, well then, I will check with you in a few days. Yes, thank you. Goodbye. What is it, Sean? I'm up to my neck. What are you doing? I am checking on Jason Savko, the boy that we placed with the Dordell family. Yeah, the short kid. Yes, I'm, I'm trying to get some kind of confirmation that he has signed up for... The special needs programs he may require. Special needs? He's just short. Besides, program placement is usually handled by schools, not caseworkers. Well, this caseworker wants to be sure that nothing falls through the cracks. Maxine, you are not even supposed to be here. I've already put through the paperwork on your six-week medical leave, per your doctor's orders. When my daughter called you, did you tell her that nobody likes a snitch? Look, I have never pulled rank on you. Mostly because you just ignore me and I'd back down. But this time, that is just what I'm doing. Pulling rank and not backing down. Either you go home right now, or I will fire you. <laughs> I will. to be like last time. Let's hope. In the matter of uh, baby Jane Doe, the Her state... Her name is Tess. Like Tess of the D'Urbervilles. Uh, Ms. Ms. Warren. Uh, the state is petitioning for an OTC? DCF is requesting an order of temporary custody on the grounds of failure to protect, child endangerment. I take very good care of my baby. The infant was found by a high school janitor in the library storage room. Cheryl works as a student library assistant and has been keeping the baby hidden in the storage room for the past month and a half. It took a month and a half before somebody discovered a baby in a storage room? Your Honor, the storage room isn't used by anyone other than the student aide. My client kept Tess there during the day while she was in classes and carried her home in her knapsack at night. She was afraid to tell her mother she'd had a baby. And the mother slept through the wake-up cries for the 3 a.m. feedings? Mrs. Warren works in assembly line swing shift at Pratt and Whitney, leaving her daughter Cheryl home alone at night. Cheryl Warren is clearly unfit and ill-prepared to provide for the infant. That's just not true. Despite the unusual circumstances under which Tess lived, she's in excellent physical health due to my client's exemplary care. Well, don't push it, Mr. Simmons. Keeping a baby in a storage room is not exactly an example I'd urge others to follow. In any case, Your Honor, now that Mrs. Warren is aware of the birth of her grandchild, she is anxious to assume custody and provide a warm and loving home. A home so warm and loving that her daughter was afraid to tell her she was pregnant? Ms. Feinberg, give me a slightly less cynical version of DCF stand. DCF recommends placement in a temporary foster facility until a suitable long-term home can be found. Okay, um, I'll allow an emergency order of temporary custody pending an evidential hearing on this matter, and uh, I will hear arguments for permanent custody from both sides on... 
Uh, fr Friday. Friday. No, uh, Wednesday. No, uh, tomorrow at 10. Two. Tomorrow at two. 30. Are you sure? Absolutely. Pretty sure. Excuse me, Kyle. What's wrong now? Giselle, Randy, eat your melon again? Um, no. Jenna insulted your hat? What's wrong with my hat? Nothing. Love the hat. What is it? Um, there's this new girl. She won't interact. She copped a toot about the sign and cheat. Not everybody's as enthusiastic as you, Giselle. Just give her some time. How long has she been coming around? I don't know. I tried to greet her yesterday, but she blew me off. That's her. Her? You want to hear where she told me to put the welcome sheet? What's wrong? Do you know her? She isn't supposed to be here. Giselle, please, I can handle this. I believe you have something of mine. What? My backpack, remember? Maybe you're here to return it so I won't have to press charges. She's burning up. Maybe she OD'd. You know, drugs aren't allowed in here. It's not an overdose. Call 911. Are you officially giving me permission to use the phone? Call 911! A healthy house is the first step toward a healthy body. Lauren! Don't make me call you again! We're gonna be late! I'm not certain, but I think I just heard your blood pressure spike. Well, it's not my blood pressure we're worried about. Well, we don't have to worry about that because I am on a forced sabbatical, which means I intend to spend the day in bed. Resting. Yes. Until 3 p.m. What happens at 3 p.m.? I signed you up for an activity. What activity? The wise women walkers. Oh, for the love of God. No, it's it's better than it sounds. You're, you're going to love it. I already don't love it. Well, it's a way to get exercise without being bored. <laughs> well, can't they walk without naming themselves? I don't know. Maybe they wanted T-shirts. <laughs> if you think that I am Which going to... Which you don't have to wear. Why don't you join the wise women walkers? Because I'm not the one that collapsed. Just try it, okay? I would rather snort prune juice up my nose. You can do both. Are you and Grandma fighting? No. Yes. She hated the wise women walkers, right? Let's get in the car. Just, just try it. You're gonna love it! Bruce, you're, you're back. Yes, I am. Uh, may I sit? I prefer to be alone. Uh, okay. I just want to say, I, I'm, I'm so sorry for everything you're going through. Thank you. No, not that I know everything you're going through. You know, not, not that I need to. Just, you know, just keep this in mind. We're still us. I, I mean, of course we are. But when a person does something out of character, it could precipitate a dark night of the soul. Not that I'm using the word dark pejoratively, or, or, or the word soul lightly, or, or lightly to make light of darkly. Dumb. Look, if you had brought a, a, a Boston Terrier over from France 200 years ago, it would still be a Boston Terrier. Donald, what are you talking about? People don't become someone they're not. Like Boston Terriers from France. Boston Terrier is an American breed. They'd never be in France. And what does any of this have to do with me? I'm thinking maybe we should just drop it. Please. I need to go now. Good. Mm -hmm.